Hi, this is Guy. I have been doing pest control since 1981. And I have rubbed elbows with a lot of pest controllers in my time. For the most part, they are a pretty honest lot. But there are some things that they would most likely prefer that you did not know. Before I get started though, I want to share a little secret with you. Seriously, you really need to hear this. You see, if you would like to have all the information that is going to be contained in this video, just sort of transmitted into your brain, without you actually having to watch the video, then all you need to do is just click on that little like button and all of this information is just going to kind of miraculously be imprinted on your brain. Okay, I'm just kidding of course. Wouldn't it be great if I could really do that? Still, I would really love for you to click on that like button. Also, Please click on that subscribe button as well. And be sure to click on that little bell next to it so that you will be notified when I have another video posted. Okay. So here are 12 things that pest controllers do not want you to know. Number one, pest control is easy. That's right. The truth is pretty much anybody can do it. You don't need to be particularly strong or young and you certainly do not need to be a man. More and more women are getting into the field now and I think that's great news. The fact is most of the time even a child can do it. Yeah, because of all the you know, mystery and misinformation that is surrounding this stuff, it's probably not a good idea to send your kids out to apply pesticides. But the fact is that they would be able to do it. Sure. There are times when pest control can be a little bit of work. You know, like if you're trenching for termites or something like that. But the vast majority of the time, this is really easy work. So, so pest controllers are not selling you anything that you cannot do yourself quite easily. What they are really selling you is their knowledge. Simply put, you are paying them because they know something you don't. But guess what? They have no magic bullets. Number two, pest control is not expensive to do. That's right. The truth is that most of the cost for hiring a pro is going to be labor, overhead, and the profit that they wish to make. While a gallon of a professional pesticide can look really expensive, the truth is it goes a really long way. In most cases, you can do your own pest control for a fraction of the cost that the pros charge. Think about it. Not only do they have to charge you for labor and material, but overhead as well. You are paying for the phones, the vehicles, the uniforms, the equipment, 
the office worker to answer the phone, the accountant, the insurance, the income tax, the computers, the advertising, and, and on and on and on. Then they need to add some sort of profit. I mean, they're not exactly doing this to run a charity, right? But all you need to do is buy the pesticides and maybe an inexpensive sprayer and perhaps some protective equipment, you know, like rubber gloves and goggles, and you're good to go. So this is going to be a lot less expensive for you to do rather than hiring a professional. Trust me, if you do this work yourself, you are going to save a boatload of cash. And your wallet is going to love you for it. Number three. Pesticides are not all that hazardous to use. The pest control industry has us all thinking that using professional pesticides is a very dangerous thing to do. But is it now? Pesticides got a really bad rap in the 20th century. But this is no longer the 20th century. Almost all of those really hazardous pesticides were banned near the end of the 20th century. They literally do not make them anymore. Today, most pesticides are required to be safe for children. That's right. After they are applied and have dried, those pesticides are required to be safe for kids. The truth is that the toxicity of pesticides, like all chemicals, are rated with signal words. The signal word that they put on the label is going to tell you just how hazardous a chemical really is. Well, guess what? The signal word on most of the pesticides that the pros are going to use and the pesticides that you can buy in, as well in most states have the same exact signal word as common laundry detergent. That's right. The truth is that most of the pesticides that you are going to be handling are no more toxic than the laundry detergent that you use to wash your clothes. Sure, you certainly do not want to be bathing in this stuff. But if you get a little on your hands, then just simply wash them and you will be just fine. Now, this does not mean that you should not wear protective equipment such as gloves, goggles, a mask, and so forth. But this material is nowhere near as hazardous to your health as you were led to believe. Number four, you can do things that the pest controllers will not do. It's true. There are some pest control applications that a lot of pest controllers simply will not do. And that will leave your home unprotected against some pests. For example, many pest controllers will not apply pesticides above their heads. So that means that they will not spray your eaves or fascia boards. This can be a problem in some areas of the country because dry wood termites enter through, guess what? The eaves and fascia boards. And if you have unpainted wood, you know, that may just be stained or something, 
then you can also be subject to carpenter bees as well. Also, many pest control companies will not treat your attic with Boracare. Again, this would be a problem in certain areas of the country because treating your attic with Boracare is an excellent way to treat and prevent dry wood termites as well as other wood destroying pests. Since it can be difficult or even impossible sometimes to find a pest control company that will perform these functions, then these are applications that you have no choice but to do yourself. Obviously, since these pest control companies will not perform these functions, they are not going to even tell you that these are treatments that should be done. So, unless you have really done your homework to learn all about these different pests, such as dry wood termites, and if you don't do it yourself, then you are going to get reinfested time and time again with dry wood termites. Number five, you do not need to spray for mosquitoes to get rid of them. Some pest controllers make a pretty good living going from home to home with a big backpack fogger and fogging yards with a pesticide for mosquitoes. While that will keep the mosquito population down to a minimum, most of the time, all you really need to do is simply remove the breeding areas and you will no longer have a mosquito problem. The truth is that only female mosquitoes bite and that is because they need to take a blood meal before they lay their eggs. Since they only lay their eggs in shallow standing water, then all you need to do is remove those water sources and voila, you no longer have a mosquito problem. Common areas where mosquitoes breed are things like bird baths that you know, have not been properly cared for, swimming pools that are no longer in use, flower pots that have a pan of water under them, low spots in your yard where water tends to gather and stay, or any other areas where there is shallow standing water. A reputable pest controller will go around and assist you with removing these water sources and correcting those sorts of problems. But there are some pest controllers who will simply show up at your property, do some fogging, and then just hand you the bill. It's a great gig for them too, because th since they did not remove the breeding areas, they are going to need to refog your property every two to four weeks. It's quick and easy work for them, and it pays really well too. So do your wallet a favor and just remove the breeding areas and then show those folks the door. Now, you may get some flying, you know, some mosquitoes flying over from your neighbor's yard, but there's nothing that you can do about that. And it's the same for the pest controllers as well. Fogging your yard is not going to do anything to stop mosquitoes from flying over from your neighbor's yard. If you want the full scoop on how to get rid of mosquitoes yourself, I will place a link in the description for a video on how to do just that. Number six, tenting your house and fumigating for dry wood termites does not last. Any pest control company worth their salt will tell you if you have dry wood termites then the best way to get rid of them is to fumigate your house. But what they often do not tell you 
is that the gas that they use to fumigate your house has no residual action whatsoever. And so you can get reinfested literally the moment the tent comes down. While it is true that some pest control companies will give you a one or perhaps a two year warranty, and the fact is that there are some states that mandate that they give you a one or two year warranty, this does not ensure that you will not get reinfested. You see, most people do not realize that they have been reinfested until they start to see those swarmers, you know, those flying termites that come in. And so they don't know they're there. But here's the rub. It takes dry wood termites four to seven years before the galleries can mature to the point where they will produce those swarmers. Therefore, you may, you may well be infested for two or more years after the tent comes down and you will never realize that you have the problem again. So while a one or two year termite guarantee may give you a lot of peace of mind, the truth is those guarantees are totally worthless. Also, did you know that after the fumigation is completed, you may get infested with carpenter ants? And that is because carpenter ants like to feed on, guess what? Termites. And they may be attracted to all those dead bodies that are now laying around inside your walls and your attic and places like that. Not only do those dead termites provide a nice tasty source of food for the carpet ants, but the termites already did most of the work tunneling out the wood for them. So all the carpet ants need to do is just have a feast in your walls and, well, breed. Now, now that they have gotten into your home, there's a very good chance that they are going to build a satellite colony in your home and they're just going to stay there. Now you would think that, you know, it would be, well, a common courtesy for pest control companies to disclose this information to you, right? But many of them do not. The good news though, is that these potential problems can be prevented by treating the outside of your home every three months with a pesticide. And it's super easy to do. The pest controllers probably won't do it, but you can do it yourself. Yes, I do have a video on how you can do it. And of course, I will put a link in the description for you. Number seven, you do not need to trench around your house to treat for subterranean termites. And you don't need to waste your money on expensive baiting systems either. If you have a problem with subterranean termites, then there is a good chance that you can treat it yourself for about $50 and about an hour's worth of your time. Most pest control companies are either going to try to sell you an expensive baiting system or an expensive treatment where they dig a trench around your entire home and then bore a bunch of holes through your concrete slabs like patios, driveways, and, and they're going, then they're going to inject a, a termiticide into those holes. While both of these treatment plans are certainly effective, they are also expensive 
and usually not necessary. If you have dirt around most of your home, then you can simply use a granulated termiticide to sprinkle around the perimeter of your home and just water it in with a common garden hose. Using granules to treat your subterranean termites is going to work about 95% of the time and it's going to save you a ton of cash. Now, the pest controllers are going to tell you that it will never work. But I've been, I have been using this since the mid-1990s and it has never failed me. So who are you going to believe? The folks who want to sell you an expensive treatment? Or the guy who makes no money whatsoever one way or the other? Look, how about this? Since it's only $50, why not give it a try? If it doesn't work, then you can either hire a pro or go ahead and trench the house yourself. I got a video on that too. So you don't have to take my word for it. Try it for yourself. You see, another little fact that the pest controllers do not want you to know is that subterranean termites are fairly slow eaters. And so they will do very little damage in the amount of time it takes to figure out if the granules have worked for you. Now, you should be aware though that using the granules is not recommended for Formosan termites because they have the ability to colonize inside your home, like in your walls and what we call cartons. And it will not work for dry wood termites either because those guys aren't even subterranean. For the rest of the termites in the United States though, which accounts for about 90% or more of the termite damage, then the granules are definitely the way to go first. Now, if you want to see a video on how to apply the granules correctly, well, you guessed it. There will be a link in the description. Number eight, pest controllers do not want you to know that they have no idea how to eliminate a German cockroach infestation. It's true. They don't. It doesn't matter what pest control you hire. They are all going to tell you that they can get rid of your German cockroach infestation. Unfortunately, they are not telling you the truth. All they are doing is selling you a service to control your cockroach infestation. They are not actually going to get rid of the problem entirely. If you don't believe me, just ask anyone who has hired a pest control company to treat their German cockroaches. All these companies are going to do is keep the cockroach population knocked down to the point where you seldom, if ever, notice any cockroaches. That is the reason that they must continue to come back every month to treat for these things. If they had actually eliminated the problem, there would be no reason for them to return. It's kind of a no-brainer if you think about it. The good news, though, is that there is a way that you can totally eliminate your German cockroach infestation and you can do it yourself. There probably aren't a dozen pest controllers in the entire world that know how to do this. But you can learn how to do it by watching a video and I will provide a link to that video in the description. Number nine, fogging for cockroaches is a very bad idea. A common practice that some pest controllers use to control German cockroaches, mostly done in apartment buildings, 
is they fog. This is a process where they literally use a machine that creates a pesticide fog that kind of fogs the whole apartment. It's kind of like spraying a can of Raid with all the fog coming out. Well, this is going to produce a lot of dead bodies and it's really going to impress the landlord. It is also going to drive literally thousands of cockroaches into the adjoining apartments and it's going to make the overall problem even worse. The landlords like this because, because the cockroaches will not return to the fogged apartment for at least a couple of weeks which will give the landlord time to rent it to some unsuspecting tenant who will not know that they are about to enter into the twilight zone of terror by being infested with these German cockroaches. So if a pest controller suggests to you that you fog apartments, please know that this is the very last thing that you want to do. You would be much better served to use other treatment methods such as baiting, insect growth regulators, permanent pesticides such as boric acid and boron and things of that nature. I will place a link in the description that will take you to a video that will show you exactly how you can do this yourself. Number 10. Most pesticides will not kill bees. It's no secret that the bee population has been declining over the past few years and it sure was easy to blame the problem on pesticides. Was it, but was it really the pesticides or was it something else? Well, here's the truth. Pesticides come in two basic flavors. There are repellent pesticides and there are non-repellent pesticides. If you spray plants with a non-repellent pesticide, then the target pests do not know that they are being poisoned and they will happily take the pesticide back to the colony or in this case, you know, with bees, back to the hive, and they will share it with the other insects. The non-repellent pesticide will get spread around to the other insects, and the entire colony, or in this case the hive, will completely die out. Hence, all the hype around killing bees with pesticides. But that is only part of the story. In the case of repellent pesticides, the insects, including bees, have a way of knowing that the pesticide is actually a poison and they are going to avoid it. That means they will not take it back to the colony or the hive. In fact, they generally will not go near it. So the bees are not going to take it back to the hive and kill off all the other bees. Therefore, as long as you use a repellent pesticide, the bees are perfectly safe. And guess what? The pros use it all the time on your lawn and ornamental plants. So, if it's okay for the pros to do it, then why have lawmakers in some states and some other countries banned those products for purchase by non-licensed people? Why not just ban the non-repellent pesticides? You know, I can't help but wonder if those lawmakers that did this in some states and some countries were really that uninformed or do you suppose maybe just maybe there could be another reason number 11 pesticides 
do not harm the environment. So right now you're probably going, say what? Surely the indiscriminate use of pesticides by do-it-yourselfers is destroying the environment and nobody wants that, right? Well, not so fast. Modern day pesticides are formulated to stay where you put them. That means if you treat your lawn, those pesticides are not going to run off into the drainage systems, you know, whenever it rains, and somehow find their way into the ocean or your drinking water. Also, they will not leach deep enough into the ground to cause any harm whatsoever to the aquifer. The truth is that pesticides will not run off or leach into the ground after they dry, and they dry very quickly. So unless you are, you are applying this stuff you know, directly in the rain or just before it rains, the environment is going to be perfectly fine. Now, of course, you don't want to be applying this stuff in lakes, ponds, and such as that. But who does that anyway? You would need to be a, excuse my French, you would need to be a real jerk to dump pesticides into a lake. Look, there are paint products that are more hazardous than most of the pesticides that are on the market today. So, if most people are not going to throw paint into ponds and lakes, then why would they do that with pesticides? Tr folks, people are just not that stupid. Nobody wants to purposely kill off the fish and other wildlife by polluting our waterways. So tell me again why lawmakers want to stop homeowners from buying pesticides. They don't stop us from buying paint, do they? Could it be because the painter's lobby is not quite as well funded or active as the pesticide lobby? I have a feeling that Banning pesticides had something to do with the color green, but I don't think it's about the kind of green that the environmentalists are talking about. Number 12. Prices can vary a great deal from one pest control company to another. When most people call a pest controller, they usually just hire the first one that they call. But this is a huge mistake. Prices can vary greatly from company to company, so it pays to shop. I have literally seen prices for a termite treatment, for example, that would vary as much as a couple of thousand dollars between companies. Naturally, a lot of pest control companies do not want you to know this. So, if you find yourself in a position where you must hire a pest control company, always call at least three to six companies in order to get the best price. Keep in mind that not all pest control companies treat the same way. Just because you're getting a better price does not mean necessarily that you are getting a better service or the same service as the other pest control company. Therefore, always ask the pest control company for the specific species that, the, the, that they are going to treat for and exactly what the treatment plan is going to be. And you should always get this information in writing. Hey, it's your house and you have a right to know exactly what pesticides they are planning to use 
and exactly how they are planning to use them. Finally, some pest control companies will use high pressure sales tactics, like telling you that the price is only good for today. Trust me, the price is going to be good tomorrow as well. And in fact, the price may even go down tomorrow. Boy, am I going to get some hate mail for sharing that one. Okay, that's it for me today. I think I have probably created enough mischief for one day, don't you? Look, if you found this video to be of assistance to you in any way, please share it with a friend or family member. And if you would like to see more of my videos, then please click on that subscribe button and don't forget to click on that little bell next to it so that you will be notified the next time I have a video posted. Now, if you really like this video, then please show me a little love by clicking on that like button. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. And please, do not hesitate to ask questions. Remember, I will answer any question about any pest, any time, for anybody, for free. Even if I do not have a video on the particular pest in question, I am always here to help.